All right, joining us now, fellow Republican Congressman French Hill, who's on the House Financial Services Committee. Uh, Congressman, thank you for being with us. I want to play something from one of the folks who voted no yesterday, uh, one of your fellow members who says you got this wrong. This is Congressman Tim Burchett. We further abdicated our duties. It's a big word for me, but we did. We decided to uh, kick the can down the road 45 more days. <laughs> And they sweeten the pot, put some extra stuff in there for some people so they vote for it. And uh, that's just not what leadership should do. Says not what leadership should do, and you heard from Congressman Donalds, thinks that leadership got this wrong. Well, Shannon, it's good to be with you. It was great to hear my good friend Byron Donalds' uh, remarks. I voted for Byron Donalds' continuing resolution that secured the border and cut spending 8%. I thought it was an outstanding a proposal for a stopgap spending measure, including, Shannon, something you haven't talked about, which is that two-thirds of spending is mandatory spending. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Donald's resolution and uh, put together with his group also had a commission to reform mandatory spending programs, something that's a much more big fiscal problem for our country. So look, I supported that. It failed. It failed because all the Democrats voted against it, plus 21 Republicans. And we had six Republicans tell us, Shannon, they just wouldn't vote for any continuing resolution, period, full stop. They preferred the government essentially to shut down while we continued the appropriations bills. I think that's the wrong approach. We've passed 70 percent of spending across the House floor. The Senate has passed none. This four weeks will let us bring the rest of those individual appropriations bills to the floor that are at substantially lower spending levels than Joe Biden and, and Kevin McCarthy's debt ceiling deal. And they have important conservative policy writers that turn back the Biden and Nancy Pelosi policies of the last uh, two years. Well, given that there is so much internal friction with the GOP, people who feel betrayed, you heard what Congressman Donald said. He's not sure how he'd vote right now if the speaker, a motion came up yeah. to pull him out of that. You understand there's skepticism that people look at 12 appropriations bills in 45 days with that as the backdrop and don't, well, they think that we may just be in the same place in 45 days, 44 days again. Well, I would, I would say we, we wouldn't be. I understand the trust point that Byron made, and I think there are people inside our conference, freshmen and sophomores and other members, that have concerns about trust in the system. But we made a commitment to do 12 appropriations bills, and we've been trying to do that since July. We got one passed in July. We got others passed this week. We've now approved in the House with full House Republican vote, no Democratic votes, basically, 72% uh, or so of all federal spending. So over the next four weeks, we have to approve the other 28% of federal spending. It's Which not will... all 12. It's a, it's, right. it's a, and, it's a and, subset of that. And the, Senate, and the Senate has done none. And this will hopefully get them into the game and get their work done as well. Yeah, and that 28%, um, very sticky. That's where it, the details become very difficult. Uh, I want to ask you about Congressman Bowman. Um, he, there is a still picture of him. He admits that he did pull a fire alarm yesterday. Um, during a sort of a chaotic time on the Hill that, that led to evacuation, um, he says this, though, I activated the fire alarm mistakenly thinking it would open the door. He was trying to get through those doors. I want to be very clear. This was not me in any way trying to delay any vote. Um, he said pulling that he thought would open those doors. Do you accept his explanation? Will there be an investigation? Well, look, all my kids in elementary school went to safety town. They know how to pull a fire alarm and what happens when you do it in a public building. I think it's just emblematic of the fact that Democrats uh, can't figure out how to cut spending and have a, a right approach to government. They can't even run a fire alarm. So I look forward to the investigation. We'll see the full videotape. We'll see what he's up to. Either way, it doesn't look good for him. Well, Democrats are celebrating this morning, though. You've got Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez tweeting this late yesterday. Here's what went down. We just won a clean 45-day government extension, stripped the GOP's earlier 30% cuts to Social Security Administration, et cetera, staved off last-minute anti-immigrant hijinks and averted shutdown for now. People will get paychecks and MTG through a tantrum on the way out. Win, win. If they're celebrating what happened yesterday, how is that a win for you? Well, it's a win because we're finishing our a commitment we made to America in 2022 that we would bring up individual spending bills. We would debate them on the floor with an open, uh, long-standing rule process. We would get conservative spending levels that cut spending in 2024 over 2023. 
that we would get people back to work in this country by in, in adding work requirements to the welfare programs, which President Biden caved on in the debt ceiling deal. So what we're doing is we want to lock in the conservative wins in the debt ceiling deal with lower spending, more conservative policies, get some help from that in the Senate. But the only way we do that, Shannon, is to pass those bills. And that's the debate. The debate in the House conference wasn't whether we should pass them or not at lower spending levels. The debate was, should we do it while the government shut down? And I don't think not paying border agents, not paying the men and women in uniform for four weeks while we complete debating bills for the last 28% of spending is smart government. Plus, plus, Moody's this week announced that they may consider downgrading uh, the U.S. government's uh, credit rating. And we saw the 10-year Treasury rate go to 4.5%. These are warning signs that we need to deal with mandatory spending programs and we need to go back to pre-pandemic spending levels. That's the debate we need to have while we secure the border. All those are priorities and those are shared by all Republicans in the House. Very difficult decisions to come. Congressman Frenchill, thanks for stopping in. You bet, Shannon. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.